Japan is delightfully exotic. It doesn't seem to matter where you're from. Japan is just different. We've been wanting to go to Japan for a while, and when we found a last minute chance to visit a cousin living there, we jumped at the opportunity. Flights are a big challenge in getting to Japan right now with high cost and limited availability. We used frequent flyer miles to book last minute tickets. So while the one direct flight per day was already full, our tickets were nearly free and we got the chance to stop by Shanghai for some noodles en route. We left BC first thing Saturday morning and touched down in Osaka at 9 a.m. So we had low expectations for day one. We picked up our internet hotspot, four IC cards, and our regional train passes in the airport, then hopped the Hello Kitty Express to Kyoto Station. We were too early to check in when we arrived at the hotel, so we dropped our bags and headed out for some lunch. Our first meal in Japan was a delicious bowl of ramen with perfectly cooked Wagyu beef chunks in the steaming bowl of noodles. From there, we walked to the closest subway station to ride a train south to Fushimi Inari to see the famous Red Tori Gates. We figured a dreary afternoon would hold the crowds at bay, but that sure didn't seem to help. While the attraction was crowded in parts, it did get emptier as we climbed towards the top. In the Shinto tradition, Inari is the guardian of rice, agriculture, and business. Since the Edo period, over 10,000 Tori gates had been donated to this shrine by Japanese businesses, seeking favor with or giving thanks to Inari. Despite the crowds, it's incredible seeing a number of big red gates erected all the way up the mountain, or at least as far up the mountain as we got. We made it to the view of Kyoto and then headed back down the mountain for strawberry treats at the stand nearby. We made it back to our hotel in Gion and didn't even have dinner. We headed straight for bed around 7 p.m. We planned to wake up early on our first morning in Japan, but with rain in the forecast, we decided to sleep in a little. No need to rush out into the rain. When we finally got out the door around 9, we headed over to the Arashiyama Bamboo Groves, one of the more famous and crowded sites in Kyoto. While the rain may have kept the crowds at bay a bit, there were still plenty of people. I think the weather and the jet lag were affecting us, because while the groves were impressive and beautiful, they really weren't our favorite site so far, and we probably could have skipped them. The Arashiyama area, though, has a lot of good food, and hot noodles seemed like just the ticket for our lunch. We ate a delicious meal of soba noodles at a delightful cafe overlooking the river and watched the rain fall. With our stomachs full and the rain letting up, we caught a bus north to Otagi Nenbutsuji. This temple's famous for its hundreds of monk statues in a variety of pretty funny poses. This was my favorite temple of the day. Just a fun, beautiful little spot in the hills. The kids also picked up stamp books at the temple and began collecting stamps and calligraphy as records of the trip. With time and energy for only one more stop, we moved on to Kikakuji, the Golden Pavilion. The pavilion was built by a 12th century shogun as a retirement village to recreate heaven on earth as he entered the priesthood. While notoriously crowded, the Golden Pavilion was amazing and was absolutely worth a stop. From Kikakuji, we headed back to the hotel. After our long day of touring, it was another 7-Eleven dinner for us, and we collapsed into bed early once again. I woke up early, as I often do on trips, like this, to go for a walk. But this morning, it was so empty and so beautiful that I practically ran back to the room to grab everyone and get out the door for a walk. We stayed in the Gion region of Kyoto, and the area is simply stunning in the morning. We walked through the old streets, past wooden buildings, temples, and pagodas. Then we continued up the hill to the Kiyomizu Dera Temple, overlooking the city. We explored the beautiful temple grounds before slowly making our way back to the hotel to pack up our bags. Our last stop in Kyoto was at the Niseki Market, where we walked the aisles sampling food for our lunch. The donut shop was pure bliss, but the rest of the food in the market didn't disappoint.
I was proud that the kids even tried octopus on a stick. And all too soon, we're out of time in Kyoto. This city is absolutely beautiful. There's so much to see, and the food is delicious. The weather wasn't perfect for our time here, but we were able to still see most of what we wanted to see. Next time, we would definitely stay longer and take more time to explore the city. From here, we head to Osaka for the next stop on our trip. Come along with us in the next video.